Hey everyone, it's Phoenix. I just wanted to do a really quick video to um, sort of explain the new um, whitelist debuff feature in Surrender. So there was a, a little bit of a bug too, which, which I patched in the first version. Um, so I'm like the only person doing the uh, the debug. So yeah, some things get through. But uh, basically, I have set it up so that on the right-hand side of my character here, you will see the regular debuff window. And on the left side, you'll see things that I've whitelisted to uh, go to the prominent debuffs. And in the settings there, um, you can choose a frame to put it in. And that's kind of the standard with how Surrender works. You can move the frames around and assign it to what frame you want it to go in. Um, so I have gone into the settings and... I assigned a couple things for the sake of the video. Okay, this is for the group. Okay, so the debuff whitelist. I went ahead and added taunt. Um, that really should clear out. I'll probably update it so that automatically clears. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't do anything. But um, I added taunt and major breach as things I want to track for now. You can add more. Um, but I wanted to sh mainly show that. Um, that it will update for the target that you have. If you have taunts on multiple things, like, okay, I'm just going to jump in there and, and do this. So I go ahead and put that up. As you can see, the major fracture um, is going in the regular debuffs because it isn't whitelisted. And uh, as long as I have that under my target, um, then it's going to keep me informed and it'll update them now appropriately instead of stacking. That was the bug. So now when I hit this, it refreshes them instead of stacking them. Um, it was a really simple bug to fix, but um, basically I wanted to show how... Okay, so see there's seven second left. Now if I go and taunt this guy, see now 14, but this guy's three. So it keeps track of the um, different targets that actually have the um, different durations remaining, so that's kind of cool. Like as you target over things, you can see how much time is left on each of those taunts and refresh them if they're needed. Like here's four seconds left. Okay, I'll go ahead and refresh that. This has still got 10, but whatever. That's basically the idea. So regular, the end. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is you see how Invigorating Drain does two things. It's because a lot of abilities, um, Zenimax didn't bother to give them their own names. It's kind of crappy, actually. Um, like you would because like invigorating drain is doing two things it's doing a stun and um, it's doing a damage over time so basically it's sending two different effects to the game it's not something with surrender it's it's in the game um, it's sending two different effects but one is for the damage over time and one's for the stun but they're both given the same name really crappy. It'd be nice if it was given even something simple like, you know, stun, I don't know, whatever. Um, that means basically since it doesn't have a unique name, you have to go manually if you want to do an add-on tracker, like Surrender, and set up a database of cases for every single time that happens and manually um, make a coding exception for it. So that's what that is that's why you're seeing that it's not a bug that's a Zenimax feature but I mean it's not that big a deal but I mean the general idea of this wow man, nice lag <laughs> my internet sucks man I have no money and I'm living out in the middle of nowhere so my internet is literally like one megabit per second you don't even understand how slow that is one megabyte no one megabit take a megabyte and divide it by eight that's how fast my internet is it's ridiculous, but uh, at least I get good ping, so there's that. Um, but anyway, like um, as you move your cursor over different targets that you have debuffs on, they update in real time, so um, if you have multiple things taunted, you can keep track of your taunts on multiple things real easy just by changing your target, and then you know that, okay, nine seconds left, switch over to this one. This one lost its... Uh, debuffs. I'm not sure what the hell happened there. Oh, I'm on the wrong bar. I'm not putting the debuff on it. Okay. That's just me being tired. So 14 seconds. Okay, this one's got 9. This one's got 11. This one's 7. This one's got 9. Okay. So you get the idea. It keeps track of them on multiple things. That's the idea. 
Um, so it makes it real easy just when you change your target to see when you need to reapply the prominent things, which is the things you see on the left. Anyway, so the bug was fixed um, in time for the weekend, so I'm happy with that and I'm happy with the way they turned out as far as the orange and the new looks. Something else I'm going to probably do, I haven't decided yet, but you see how this, the animation style? I'm thinking about making the option to add the animation style or the original just plain old icon style um, and to hide the bar or and show just the text or actually show the bar. I'm thinking about making that an option um, per bar like the other options when you go into the settings panel. Um, but it's going to be a little tricky to do it. So, um, yeah, but that's because right now you, you have the, and the main reason is because you have to reinitialize um, so I haven't quite decided if I want to do it because it's it shouldn't be too bad I just haven't I'll, I'll dig into it and see how it looks but basically um, right now you have the option to either show that cool looking um, borderless kind of sleek fits with dark UI pretty good um, and also makes it easier to see the auras because before a lot of these are transparent the default game or um, icons are transparent so it puts this nice like black um, backdrop against them which makes it really easy to see against different kinds of lighting and background color so there's there's that and so you have the option to either use the new style um, with the animation and the backdrop or use the original by turning that off and then you can also um, hide the bar in full mode. I'm thinking about putting these two options though on each of these which are the settings for the individual um, windows like when you go and unlock each of these windows has a number and uh, I also added a couple of new extra ones just in case you wanted to play with stuff since there's so many prominent stuff you can do now um, and I updated Phoenix UI to give it my UI with like I've kind of updated the layout now. I'm actually making my prominent buffs show up down here with my enchants um, as just icons and move to the right and then um, regular debuffs on the target over here and prominent ones on the left since I'm kind of looking at the target it's easier to have those here and here as opposed to where it was down by the health bar before. Plus now that I'm using um, action duration reminder that constantly makes the health bar go up and down and up and it doesn't make sense to have it there anyway because it, the health bar is either going to overlap it if you're on your back bar and you've got something that you're tracking like see how the health bar goes up to make room for the that's action duration reminder is just epic because you can put something that's on one bar and flip over to the other and it keeps the cooldown of how long is left on it so that you know when you have to flip back over to your other bar and recast it. But th you can't dock your debuffs on top of the health bar when you're using it because it keeps flipping up and down as you switch bars. So I've changed my layout a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, that's Phoenix UI is a totally separate thing. So anyway, that's um, the basics of the new feature. Some other cool things. Um, I did actually add the ability to... Um, I made the tooltips not cover up the icons anymore, which was crappy, so that's good. But I also made it so you can, I'm going to go ahead and waste a food and do this, but you can right click on buffs and uh, any buff that is able to be dismissed, like pets, for example, like if you had your clan fear, um, you'll see the passive or the, what do they call it, the toggle, I guess, up here um, or wherever you put it. So anything that can be um, clicked off, if you go into your stat sheet, you can now click it off from any of the surrender auras. So like if I right click on that, it's gonna get rid of my food. It's like just wasted a purple food, but whatever. <laughs> so that was another new thing. And then I did add support for LUI. It's got support for Foundry Tactical, which I actually am just using now um, for just this, not even the raid frames. I'm actually using just the game's default raid frames now because I used Azura to um, lay them out in stacks that look good enough for me but whatever um just for the small group bars because they look still look pretty cool i really like how foundry tactical small group bars look so the group buff tracking works in 
uh, the vanilla game so far, and Foundry Tactical Combat, and LUI so far. Oh, and um, what is that other one that it just sort of worked in by default? I can't. Um, Joe Group? Yeah. That's Joe Group. Yeah, that was the one that was like a customization of the uh, vanilla frames. So since it used the vanilla frames, um, and then you know you can go into the settings um, depending on whatever frames you have. Um, then you can go into Azura and go into the group frame and set the offsets, the horizontal and vertical, up and down and left and right, to get it to so that the um, buffs are lined up in a place that looks good for whatever frames you happen to be using that it supports so and also with raid so that's um the basics of the uh debuff whitelist and some of the other new features there's been so many new features lately that i've kind of lost track honestly but that's just the ones that uh come to mind at the moment so I hope you enjoy the new additions to Surrender, and have fun.